Good afternoon, friends. Good afternoon. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. 
Friends, we are grateful that we get to worship God today, that we get to be in this space together on Christmas Eve to recognize, to express, to share with God everything that is in our being with God our Creator. And I invite you to do that as we worship tonight. Friends, if we should have to leave the building for any reason, just a quick announcement. This is an exit. There are exits in the back, and in the far back to the parlor, there is also an exit. We'll have an opportunity during worship to light candles. I invite you to make sure that you help children that are with you tonight to do that so that no one gets a burnt finger, okay? All right, friends, let us stand in body or in spirit, and Barbara's going to lead us in the call to worship. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. We come to celebrate the coming of the light. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. We come come to to celebrate celebrate the coming coming of the Prince Prince of Peace. I bring you good news of great joy for all the people. We celebrate celebrate the birth birth of Jesus in our our hearts and into into the world. Will you join me in singing, O Come All Ye Faithful, on page 234 in your hymnal. And as you are, I invite you to turn to the unison prayer that's printed in your bulletin. Let's join together. God of light and love, shine upon us this Christmas Eve and in the year ahead. Guide us out of darkness and into your joyous light. May our lives reflect your glorious love that others may see your Son, Jesus, born anew in us, 
And may your Christmas spirit live in each every day of our lives. Amen. So as part of a tradition during the season of Advent, we continue with our Advent wreath lighting, the four weeks that have preceded this. And tonight we light the Christ candle. We light this candle. It seems like a simple thing. Lighting a candle, a quiet thing that I might do alone. Maybe. To provide something bright in the midst of all darkness. It doesn't make that much difference. It doesn't change the power of the night to bring doubt and fear and separation. It doesn't make the world a better place lighting a candle, does it? But we light these candles because we have seen a light and we believe in increasing that light. That it does make a difference in the world around us. We light these candles because we want to be people of light. We know a God who loves the world so much that God chose to be born in a manger in the midst of darkness. We light these candles as a sign of the light of the world that is coming into darkness and we sing with joy. Tonight we light candles of peace, of hope, of joy, of trust, and of love. The people, friends, who have seen and been in darkness have experienced a great light. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth let there be love. Would you turn in your hymnals to page 217 and sing with me? First scripture reading tonight is taken from Isaiah chapter 9 and the second verse. The people who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. 
those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy, they rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and evermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The Lord sent a word against Jacob, and it fell on Israel, and all of the people knew it. Friends, our second reading is from Psalm 96, and I'll invite you to turn in your hymnals to page 815 so that you and I can read this responsively. O sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless God's name, proclaim God's salvation from day to day. Declare the Lord's glory among the nations and the Lord's marvelous works among all the peoples. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The Lord has established the world, shall never be moved. The Lord judges the people of the earth. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the woods sing for the joy. Our next reading can be found in the New Testament in Titus on page 262 if you'd like to follow along. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify himself, a people of his own, who are zealous for good deeds. And our last reading, the Gospel reading, is from Luke 2, verses 1 through 20. If you're able to stand, I invite you to do so. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration as was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the child came time for her to deliver the child, and she gave birth to a firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. 
In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child laying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at that what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Friends, this is the word of God breathed into us through God's Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Thank you, Heather. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth, lying in a manger. I have no intention today of trying to explain Christmas this afternoon. I don't know how to explain Christmas. I can't explain it. I just don't understand sometimes the magic of Christmas. Sometimes it really doesn't make sense and the gift of Christmas sometimes cannot be explained or can be understood by logic or the rational mind or even the various theologies or even our doctrines. It can only be experienced. And that is what I want to do today. I want you and me to experience Christmas. So I decided that there's something different I would like to do. I am going to ask you to do something. I will do it first, and then I would like you to follow suit, and I want you to do what I do. It may sound a little strange, but I hope you will indulge me, because I think that it will make sense. You ready? Okay, this is what I'm going to have you do. Heather, yes. Okay, I want you to go to turn to your neighbor, and I would like you just to touch them and say yes. You ready? And make sure that no one is left out. I want everyone in this congregation to be touched and I want you to say yes to them.
How do you feel? Feel good? You feel good? Do you know what just happened? You received exactly what the shepherds received that night while they were watching their flocks. You received and you passed on the good news that the angels spoke about. You just, my friends, have experienced the Christmas story. I admit it's not the usual Christmas story that we have been told or that we tell. But yes, yes is the love of the story. And that is the story behind the Christmas story. This child we receive and we celebrate is the sign of God's yes and love to you and to me and to the world around. This child is the embodiment of God's yes I love you to all the people of the world. This child will spend the rest of his life saying, yes, I love you. He will say yes to the poor, yes to the hungry, yes to the weeping, yes to the sinner, yes to the pure in heart, yes to those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Yes to the peacemakers. Yes to the outsiders. Yes to the wedding couple who ran out of wine at their wedding. Yes to the lepers. Yes to the prostitute and the tax collector. Yes to the 5,000 and yes to the demon possessed. Yes to the woman caught in adultery. Yes to Lazarus. Yes to the woman at the well and yes to the blind Bartimaeus. Yes to the hemorrhaging woman. Yes to the centurion servant. Yes to the widows. Yes to the paralyzed man. Yes to the sick and suffering. Yes to Nicodemus, yes, to Mary and Martha, yes, to Peter, James, and John, yes, to Thomas, yes, to Judas, and yes, to you and to me. Jesus. Jesus is God's yes, I love you to each and every one of us and to this world. Regardless of who we are, where we are from, what we have done, or even what we've left undone. Or perhaps what is happening in your life today. You get a yes, I love you. There is no one who does not get that yes. That yes is the gift of Christmas. And it is unconditional. It is unconditional. It is a pure and true gift. Because you see, that yes comes to us as love acceptance, forgiveness, and presence. And God's yes to you and me always comes without an if. Maybe even without a when or a why. 
God's yes, the Christmas gift never comes wrapped in an econom economy of transactions. Let me explain what I mean. I'm quite sure, that especially this past week, you've been very busy shopping. Transactions, right? Transactions. For you see, we live in a world which you pay for what you want. We are expected to return the favor, pay off the debt, or reciprocate in some way. That is not God's word, nor is it God's way. God does not love if you are worthy of being loved. God loves us unconditionally. God does not accept when you have proven yourself acceptable. God's acceptance is, again, unconditional. God does not forgive after we have changed our ways. God just forgives. God does not show up because you said your prayers or had enough faith. God's presence is without condition. There are no prerequisites to God and his yes, I love you, my children. That's the gift of this coming night. That is the gift to the world. It's like a story that a friend told me about her granddaughter. Her granddaughter is about four years old, and she said to her grandma one day, she said, um, Mama, why are you here? And her grandmother said, because I love you, right? But why? She asked again, because I just do. But why? She asked again, it's just what I do. I love you. I cannot not love you. Her granddaughter's face lit up and she just smiled. She had heard her uh, she had heard her yes, her unconditional yes. She understood that there is no no one and no reason why for her grandma not to love her. It just is. My friends, that's Christmas. That's what the child lying in the manger brings to you and to me. That's why we come here. We come to remember, to be reminded of, and to hear once again God's never-ending, yes, I love you. That's the song of Christmas. And it's playing for every one of you. Yes, I love you. Can you hear it? Can you hear those words? Yes, I love you. Sing along with it. Yes, I love you. And that, the angel says, is the good news and great joy for all the people. And that, my friends, is what living in love is all about. And all of God's people said, Amen.
Friends, at this time as we are about to participate in the celebration of communion, I'd invite you to turn in your hymnal to page 13 where we can follow along together in the liturgy. Friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When you turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. In the fulfillment of time, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. And at his birth, the angels sang, Glory to you in the highest and peace to your people on earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymns. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem and there found no room, so Jesus went to Galilee, to Jerusalem, and was despised and rejected. And in the poverty of a stable, Jesus was born. So by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. As your word became flesh, born of a woman on that night long ago, so on the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks for that bread. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples, much like we at Share It this evening. And he said to them, and we are reminded now, to take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Go ahead. When the supper was over, he took the cup gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. And on his gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all of the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast in his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. 
Friends, in the United Methodist tradition, everyone, all people, regardless of age, regardless of background, is invited to this table. I'll remind you of that. We use bread and grape juice, so um, everyone can be included. All it takes is to be saying yes. To be saying yes to God and to be seeking God in your life. The table has been set. I need two people to help serve. Anybody want to do that this evening? Come on up, Maya. Thanks. We do this at 9 o'clock all the time. You want to help, buddy? You can help. Come on up. Come on. We do this at 9 o'clock. We ask people to help on the spot, and it's amazing. It all works out. Hey, Sarah. How are you? Good. Okay, so Maya, I'm going to give you some bread, and I'm going to give you this, and you guys can go down. You're just going to hold this for me. We have gluten-free back here, so Barbara and Maya have the bread and the cup down front, and then I'll be with these guys back here for the gluten-free crackers, so you're just going to hold them, okay? Okay. All right, Jesus gives us the invitation. Our table is set. Won't you come? Hi, bud. Hey, do you want to do me a favor? Do you want to? You can hold it. You can just hold it, okay? Don't People are just going to take it, okay? Just my fall this
Let us join our hearts together in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gift of this night. We thank you for the mystery of communion. The simplicity of knowing that we go out as vessels of your love to the world. God, we thank you for that. We thank you for family and friends that gather near and far in the next few days. We thank you, God, for warm houses and food and excitement and joy. God, keep us mindful of others. Keep us mindful of the community and the world around us that we could be light in dark places on your behalf. God, if there are people here tonight that are ill or in need of healing or who have family and friends that are ill, we ask that you would comfort them and heal them. We ask that you would be with those who are lonely tonight. Give them friends. We ask, Lord, that you would be with those who are grieving or mourning. Give them a sense of peace. For all these things and the things that reside in the quiet of our hearts, we give you thanks and praise. And we offer these things back in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, at this time as an act of worship, will you give back to God in our offering? I would invite our ushers to come forward.
Friends, if you would stand and as a doxology, we will sing on page 221, the last verse of that song, In the Bleak Midwinter. Join me in our offertory prayer. Great God, our Redeemer, we sing your praises. Your glorious love shines in the face of Jesus, born a babe in this dark world. We marvel that he generously humbled himself to bring salvation. How precious is your gift of love. Let the light in our sanctuary and our songs of praise spill through the windows to neighbors dwelling in the darkness. May our gifts and offerings reflect the light of Christ and as beacons in the night draw people far and near closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, at this time, I invite you to grab your candle. Lighting of the candles at Christmas time is very special. It might seem like something simple, but something goes on here. And so I invite you to just kind of take that in. Don't rush as you're looking into the face of Christ in the person sitting next to you. As you're singing a familiar him as you are saying once again yes to our Lord and Savior this Christmas.
people of Christ, may you go forth from this place this night with the hope, the knowledge, the love of our Lord and Savior. And may you go in his peace. May we sing joy to the world.